Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I was scheduled for jury service, but it turned out that I didn't have to go in. So today is February 16th, 2017, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 328, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today we're going to be talking about big problems and how to shrink them down and fix them, okay? Specifically regarding... Lady Maria of the Astro Clock Tower. This is part two of the series, so if you want to go back a week and learn how to join the art industry, a little side thing that I was doing as I was painting this real time, just click up here. It'll take you back a week and you can get caught, all caught up. And today what we're talking about is how to go from this to this. Oh wait, more properly, from this to this, right? Lots of changes that are happening. Lots of changes. I'll go ahead and cycle back and forth so you can see the differences. But uh, after last week, right, I got to a point where I was like, this is pretty good. I feel like this is, this is generally capturing the idea that I wanted, but it doesn't have like the colors. It doesn't have the like, exact colors and the feeling, the ambiance that Bloodborne itself has, right? Like from this screenshot, I really wanted to bring this into the piece. So I ended up making some changes and we solved some big problems. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down a very special place. And that is of course, the lovely lane, so journey with me to tinyurl slash fanart, and you'll be prompted with the secret link, click it, and you will indeed see all, because you guys have been submitting some amazing work, so thank you guys so much for submitting your work, and if you have not yet submitted your stuff, strutted your stuff on the lovely lane, then just go like the page, submit your stuff, and next week, you will be featured on the Kane Kale Show. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all. I want to make sure I don't miss any. I always forget like where it ended last week. Uh, right there, I remember these ones specifically. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial. Into today's tutorial. So, we are gonna be talking about big problems. Big, big problems. And uh, so yeah, you guys know the deal. I really wanted to get that feeling. So what did I do? What did I end up doing? Well, the same thing I'm gonna suggest that you guys do. Whenever you get to this point where you feel like you're blocked, you feel like you're working on something, you're adding the colors in, but it's just not working, okay? So here's the first thing that I want you guys to do. I want you to take the entire canvas. I want you to merge it all into one layer, like you've seen here, right? Layer 24, see that? It's now its own layer. And then what I want you to do is I want you to hit Control T to transform it, and I want you to shrink it down a little bit. Shrink it down just a hair, okay? Taking your big problems and making them small. And you should get something kind of like that. And if you want, you can create another layer behind it and uh, darken it so you kind of get something like this. I find this really is helpful. to just kind of, if anything, it's like a placebo effect that makes your mind think that you are literally shrinking down your problems. Let me go ahead and darken this. And then from here, I want you to avoid zooming in. You're gonna wanna zoom in and like start like refining again, but no, don't do that. Stay zoomed out. I want this to be small. This needs to be a small problem for a moment. And then from here, I want you guys to begin making major, major changes, okay? So I'm just gonna do this a little bit real time for you and then I'm gonna take you through the time lapse and I'm gonna show you guys how I got to right here because that's exactly what I did. I took this entire piece, shrunk it down to this size Shrunk it down to this size, right? Well, you can obviously see it, but I really want to highlight it, okay? Shrunk it down to this size, and I began overpainting everything. Overpainting everything, right? And making major, major changes that made this piece look way better, obviously, okay? And um, yeah, a lot of that has to do with just sort of like starting over again, or thinking of it more so as like a color comp. Oftentimes, I'll take black and white pieces that I've been working on, I'll shrink them down, and I will do just this, and I will begin painting over it. We call that a color comp. And that was the major thing that I was having a problem with in this piece, was the colors just weren't feeling right. I wasn't getting the same feeling across. So I went in with my chalk brush, and I made sure that I was zoomed out. And I said, okay, let's try this again. And see, now I'm gonna begin just laying on crazy colors, or crazy big changes to the background. Be like, okay, well, what if this was more like uh, I want like a rim light type of thing. Like maybe the clock tower or the clock itself is right behind her. So maybe this can be like a lighter value back here, you know? And the other reason why I say uh, clip it to the this main piece right here, the square that you flattened, is because uh, it just looks a lot better. Like it won't go out of the borders while you're painting, which sometimes might be a little distracting if you do this. So just clip it, 
Clip it back by hitting Alt, hold Alt the Alt key, and then click between these two layers, okay? And do that, and you will be happy, okay? So, next thing. Uh, I noticed that Maria has blonde hair. She has blonde hair. Not, not necessarily super silver hair, but it's very blonde. And I noticed that I was getting a little crazy. I was beginning to get a little crazy with the colors. Now, Bloodborne is awesome because the colors are all very, very strategically placed. And most of the colors are very desaturated. Um, specifically, like in this red. These reds in here should not be here. They should not be there. We gotta go like super desaturated, okay? So I'm thinking for the light parts, now we're kind of going like this, right? Maybe just a little bit of red on the edges, right? Sometimes I like to throw those punch colors in on the edges there, you know? But then immediately we go back to desaturated, back to desaturated and dark down here, okay? See, and that's giving us a little bit more like that cool contrasty look, okay? Second thing. I realized is that, okay, where is the actual light source? Where are my main light sources? Um, well, most of the time I like to think about my light sources as what is your key light, AKA the one that's shining directly on the character? Where is your rim light? Uh, in this case, it's gonna be the clock tower in the back. So I also went in and I did stuff like this and I was like, okay, well, let's put in some, some rim lights. Rim light time. And we went in and did that type of thing. See, so we're just making broad strokes, broad strokes, getting some new ideas in. Also, Lady Maria has a ponytail and I totally disregarded that. And I'm sure it drove many of you crazy. Many of you Maria fans probably went crazy when you saw me do that. When you saw me close the video and I was like, okay, we're done. And there was no ponytail to be found. Um, also mixing in strange colors. Sometimes I really like to just pick a weird color like this orange and just kind of like throw it in there, just dab it in there, see if I like it. And that's another reason why I like doing this type of thing, because now you can be like, okay, do I like that? Do I like how that orange mixes in? And you can say either yes or no. In this case, yeah, I think it looks cool. Kind of looks nice next to these bluish shadows. Um, the skin on Lady Maria was way too pink. It had way too much pigment for the dark, uh, for the super like desaturated, bleak atmosphere that we're going for. Okay, so I went in there and I paled up her skin. So these are the types of things that you wanna keep in mind as you're going through and doing this type of stuff. Don't be afraid of making major changes. I also kind of brought the shadow down a little bit more on her face as well. Because I thought, okay, this hat, the hat that is kind of absorbing this light, I imagine my key light being up here. Okay, so the key light is down here, or rather up here, shining on the light onto Maria's face. Now, if that was the case, then this hat would cast a shadow here and it's gonna kind of come down and then it's gonna definitely cast a shadow all in this area. Like this entire area is gonna be in shadow, specifically over here. There's like extra light coming from over there. Not necessarily realistic if that's where our key light is, if it was up in that upper right hand corner, okay? So those things can also help Keeping that in mind, especially when you are shrunk down, I zoomed in, notice how I did that. You wanna avoid doing that, avoid doing that. At least get to the point where you have a, at least get to the point where you have something that looks m more proper in terms of your composition and in terms of colors, okay? And uh, for the hat, I was like, okay, I want a little bit more of these greenish light, a little bit more green in there. Rather than like, it was all just kind of like grays before. And I kind of wanted a little bit more color. It's interesting, I added color to where there wasn't before. And then, wait, what happened? Did I just, did I hit caps lock or something? Something happened. Hang on. Uh, What did I do? Oh, wow, I switched it over to the pencil. That's really weird. I don't, I have no idea how that happens. But sometimes it does. And I totally went to a different layer too. That's really weird. Okay, cool, but we're back. We are back. And so I put in, I put more color to where there wasn't any before, and I took away color from where there was too much before. So it's almost like I'm balancing the piece in a different way, okay? So I really like doing this stuff because I feel like it helps to take your big problems and it allows you to sort of start them over again, start over again, and get some colors in there that you like and then give it another shot, okay? 
So uh, that's how I would recommend you guys going through and changing up your pieces a little bit more. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the time lapse and I'll show you guys exactly how I did it. Now that you guys know, now that you saw a little bit of it in real time, let me show you how I properly did it in uh, time lapse form. So let's go ahead and go to the desktop, zoom in. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so you can see me zooming in. Oh, another really important thing was I actually, before I even started overpainting, I actually went in here and I did a little bit of color adjusting as well. Like I went into my hue saturation, maybe like kind of tweak the hue a little bit, tweak your saturation a little bit. Uh, you can also go into adjustments and color balance. Found this really helps. So you'd be like, okay, I want my lights to feel a little bit more yellowish. And this is a really good way to start. Good way to start. Find something that you like and then begin overpainting. Kind of balance your colors with the computer's assistance, assistance and then you are good to go, okay? So don't feel bad about that stuff either, guys. Don't feel bad about making your adjustments on the computer. You wanna use every tool to your advantage to make the exact piece that you're going for, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about that stuff. And this entire time lapse happens within the span of like 30 seconds. So you can see right here, I'm doing that same thing. Rim lights, really figuring out my, my cast shadows, what color I want my shadows to be. I ended up changing the shadow color from blues to more like this deep, let's see, what, what color is this? What color did we actually end up going with? Okay, so it's like this really desaturated kind of purple. So I'm warming up, warming up the shadows if you wanna think about it that way. Before they were blue, before they were blue, much like this one, no, not like that one. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, wait a minute. Where is the old piece? There we go. So see, they were very blue here, very blue, and then we warmed them up, pushed them towards red and desaturate, okay? And then that ends up looking like that. And, and I just, I love the way these colors look. And as soon as I did this, I was like, oh crap, I have to teach people how to do this because I know how hard it is to be stuck in the middle of a painting and you're like, oh, the colors aren't working. And then you try to like, you try to start just like fixing things on the full canvas instead of shrinking it down and thinking of it in terms of like that color comp stage, right? Just go back and get a set of colors, get a color palette that works. And then you can either leave that thumbnail small and begin translating the colors over, or you can do what I did and I actually just sized it back up and then begin do, began doing overpaints, okay? So yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And uh, after this, we'll do a little bit more cleanup. I'll show you guys how I begin cleaning up. Should you do a thumbnail like this, size it up, and then you wanna do overpaintings from there. And I'm getting like really hot. I am so freaking hot. Oh man, I gotta turn down the thermostat as soon as I'm done with this. I usually put on, okay. I usually put on the beanie when my hair starts getting like crazy out of control because if you couldn't tell, I look a little bit like a rat, a freaking, Oh, I look like a guinea pig. I look like one of those freaking long haired guinea pigs that runs across the ground. It looks like a wig, right? But it's actually living and it is a guinea pig. And <laughs> that's what I feel like right now. And I am super hot. So yeah, we'll fix that after this though. Okay, so let's talk about overpaintings. Once you get to this point, let me show you guys what I did to kind of clean things up. Clean a few things up. So our original, um, our original color comp got us to this point. Then we added on a couple more things, like say this blood in the background, and then kind of cleaning up the face as well. Uh, the reason why I am doing this here is because, or the reason, or, what, how am I trying to say this? I feel like it's been so much harder to talk lately. I don't know what's on my mind. I think I just got a lot of stuff on my mind. I'm just like, oh, oh, there's just a lot of stuff on my mind. <laughs> Uh, but I think I will be able to, yeah, I'll definitely go more into it as soon as we do the question catapults. But for right now, we need to focus. We need to focus on this. I need to talk to you guys about how to refine stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. New layer, shift control in. Okay, grab the brush. Grab the brush of your choice. I like to use the chalk brush. And then your main goal here, your main goal is to begin, well, you gotta make sure you have your reference. And you wanna look at your reference and begin translating. You wanna begin translating and thinking about sharp edges. Sharp, sharp edges. Okay, so she's got this little collar that comes down. I actually made some changes to her outfit 
um, from the original sketch because it was completely inaccurate, right? I'm such a I'm such a casual when it comes to remembering the Bloodborne, Fashionborn stuff. <laughs> but we fixed it, so that's all that matters. Uh, and I'm just going in here, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eventually get to the point where things are going to have nice, clean edges. Like, say, right through here by this hat. We want to make sure that, I mean, depending on the style that you're going for, I like a little bit of the grittiness in this. I'm, I might, like, opt to keep that towards the end all the way through. Um, but for the most part, you want to try to get away from less of this stuff. See all this in here? And you want to start thinking about this in terms of like designs and shapes and gradients. Okay. So see how I like sharpen this shape up and then I can kind of go in there and kind of gradate that, soften it. See now it's more of a design as opposed to before it was just kind of blurry and that's due in part to partially because we upsize, you know, our small thumbnail. But also just because we're a little messy sometimes. And that is okay. And you know what? I feel like this is actually a really good time to trans transfer back to... Oh man, that looks good. That looks really good as it is. Looks good already. This is a really good time to question Catapult. Because we got a great one coming in. A great one. All right, and the question is coming in from Shalik. Let's see, can can I please upsize this? Let me upsize it now. Oh, there we go. Great question coming in from Shafiq Cromwell. And the question is how to preserve your own health. I'm sure you mean physical and mental when getting into the industry. Um. And Shafiq asks, every podcast I've watched, the successful people always say to sit down and draw for 8 to 10 hours a day because there's no way, no way you'll make it if drawing is just a hobby for you. I've noticed that drawing for 8 to 10 hours a day is giving me an extreme boost in confidence and skill, but in return, I've been living a very unhealthy lifestyle from sitting at my desk drawing for hours a day. Okay, yeah, posture isn't good, back, upper, neck kind of aches. Yeah, this sounds exactly like me when I was working at Riot. Staring at a computer for that long isn't good for you. Is it possible to be a great artist at, young, at a young age and still be relatively healthy? Or am I going to have to choose one or the other? Great question. Great question, Shafiq. And I will be happy to answer as we continue with Maria. Maria. Okay, Shafiq. So, um, I got some good news and some bad news for you. The person that said you need to be drawn for 8 to 10 hours a day, otherwise you're not going to be a professional, is kind of right. They're kind of right. Uh, because you do have to, as I went into last week, you have to determine whether art is going to be a hobby or a ritual for you. Now, what is a ritual? A ritual is something that you get up every single day and you think about. It's something that is in your head eight hours a day. It is something that if you did it for eight hours a day, it doesn't really phase you that badly. But then comes the question of health. Health and all that good stuff, right? Do you need to be going to the gym? to be staying in shape. Well, what that, I mean, not only is it nearly impossible for me to get up and get outside and go to the gym for 30, 30 minutes, um, but it is, uh, I don't like to do it, you know? So uh, yeah, maybe I should just choose, I should just choose the unhealthy lifestyle. Maybe I should deal with the neck problems. Maybe I should deal with that stuff. And the answer is no, you, you shouldn't do that because the thing that the artist re forgot to tell you, regrettably so, is that they are probably taking lots of breaks as well. And if they're not, then maybe they will be a little bit better than you. And that's another thing that you need to understand. It's like, yeah, how truly great do you want to be? Do you want to be good enough to be a professional? So really dang good? Or do you want to be an absolute prodigy? Do you want to be so good that it is l like literally no one else can touch you? Because that type of skill, that type of dedication does require you to be so focused and so into what you do that it does sacrifice other areas of your life. But in order to get to a point where you're balanced, where you are a professional and you do great work and you help the team and you're freaking awesome, it doesn't require that at all. You don't actually have to make any crazy sacrifices. There is a lot of time involved, but the way that you choose to invest that time is widely um, 
it's very flexible. It's very, very flexible. So I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get intimidated thinking that that is the only way to do it. Okay, that's not the only way to do it. Okay, so prime example, me. What do I do? Well, I like to, I like to take 30 minute breaks every hour, at least. And now, granted, there's a lot of times where I forget to do this, and that's not necessarily super bad because that might mean that sometimes you're in the zone, and even though, like, I know that sounds good, sometimes it's bad to be in the zone. Sometimes it's really important to take your piece and realize, oh man, this is not working out at all. And it's like, I need to really take some time to, because imagine if I just kept refining this with the current val or the current colors that were there. No matter how much I refine this piece and no matter how much I sharpen it and detail I add to it, at the end, it's still not going to have the feeling that I was going for. But as soon as I shrunk it down, looked at this screenshot, right? I looked at this screenshot and then did this to it, I can say, oh, okay, now I see it. Now these are the colors that I wanna work with. And now I can begin refining. Now I can go back into it. So breaks can oftentimes help you out a lot too. They can work to your advantage. They can give you a broader view of the battlefield. If you wanna think of your canvas as like, the, the war front, right? You're waging war and you have to take a closer look. Imagine you're playing a game of StarCraft and it's like, how hard would it be to play the game if you zoomed in on one of your little workers the entire time? It'd be nearly impossible. You have to zoom out. You have to check the other guy's base. You gotta be doing scouting, right? I know this is a really obscure reference, but some of you out there play StarCraft or other RTSs or League of Legends, right? Imagine if you had to play the entire game locked onto your character and zoomed in all the way doesn't make any sense, right? You gotta zoom out. And the same thing happens with your work. You gotta make sure you take a break. You gotta examine it from a different angle. You gotta ask yourself the question, is this actually hitting the main points that I wanted it to from the beginning, okay? And with that, you will undoubtedly find some things that you're doing wrong. You'll find some things that you're doing wrong, but the good news is, is that once you do that, then you can easily remedy them. As I showed you today. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I want to be doing with this, and I, I don't know if I'm gonna do this for another week, I, I might, I don't know, because I did really wanna focus on materials as well. Um, today, I really just wanted to focus on telling you guys about that trick. In fact, yeah, it was, I mean, I tutor a lot of people and, and do like email critiques, and oftentimes I end up telling them when they're having problems, zoom out, like take a, Take a look at your entire drawing in a small state and ask yourself, is this reading clearly? Take a look at this face and zoom out and does it still read the way that you want it to? Is, is the character still coming through? Um, and then you can zoom in and then add all those little details, right? Forget about trying to make this look like leather right off the bat. First off, you wanna ask yourself, is the lighting consistent? Uh, is the, are the focal points working, right? Am I leading my viewer's eye to the places that I want them to look on this piece? And then when all that is said and done, once you get all that figured out, then you can go in there and say, okay, let's begin cleaning this stuff up, making it look nice, making it look pretty, okay? Now, speaking of pretty, I wanna add a little bit of, a little bit of shines to this blood. I didn't put any shines on this blood yet. Ooh, that looks great. That looks awesome. Lovely. Lovely. I like the way this blood turned out way, way more than the first one. The first blood looked kind of cartoony and it wasn't really, didn't really have the colors that I wanted. But this blood looks great. It looks so good. Love it, love it, love it. I actually like that one just like that. Okay, cool guys. So with that, that is the answer to your question, Shafiq. Hope that helps you out. And yeah, with that, we are gonna go ahead and end today's show. So I hope you guys got some good value out of this. I hope that really helps you out to really take a, take a stand for yourself when you are getting stuck on a piece, when you kind of feel like that art block is setting in or you feel like you're just going off in a weird direction with, uh, with your painting and it's not hitting that mark. Take your big problems, make them small. Look at it from a small perspective. Make a thumbnail, make a tiny little thumbnail like this and then get the colors that you want, then translate it over or make it big and then do your overpaints, okay? And I think that is gonna be it, ladies and gentlemen. So if you would like to, oh wait, I switched back to this cam, but we need to go back to this one. Uh, if you would like to download this PSD, 
as well as all the other PSDs from the past, and just click up here. It'll take you over to Patreon where you can support the show. As always, I do appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys do for the show, telling your friends about it, even just watching it and all the nice comments that you guys give. Um, and for those of you who choose to give back and download the PSDs too, you guys are freaking awesome. Uh, so yeah, go do that. Go do that. And I really like this one specifically because you just get that nice, like huge transition of these two colors. And uh, you can go in and pick apart the layers as always, um, as well as all the other PSDs too. So yeah, go do that. And thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Kim Laugh. <laughs> my name is Kim. I can't even say my own name. Like there is seriously something going on. I need to like ask myself seriously, like what is going on? I'm so, so stressed out. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna go into that, didn't I? If I can't even get my name right, there must be something going on. Okay, so here's what I think it is, guys. Here's what I think it is. Okay, so um, I just have a lot going on in my head right now. It's like, I wanna make sure that the show is coming out on time. I wanna make sure that you know the pieces that I'm doing, my personal pieces are looking good. And uh, at the same time, um, I'm trying to like balance that with work. And then, uh, oh, I have a con coming up next month. I haven't even told you guys about that. I'm actually attending Seattle Emerald City Comic Con. Uh, that is going to be March, I think, 2nd? Yeah, March 2nd. I'm going to be there. So if you guys live up in Seattle and want to come see me, then get ready to go do that. And I'll shake your hand. I will give you a hug. And it'll be freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I just got a lot on my mind for some reason. And it's like really hot up here. And I'm like sweating. And it's like, ugh. It's like, I'm crazy, man. I'm going crazy. And, um, and every now and then I have shows where I just feel like they weren't that good. Like, do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's like, I just do a show or I do a piece. I think this is actually a good lesson to take from this. I do a show or I do a piece and at the end of it, I look at it and I'm like, it's not that good. I made a ton of mistakes and I made a ton of like, men a ton of speech errors, grammatical errors. Uh, I look like a freaking guinea pig. You know, which might be, I mean, some of you like guinea pigs, it might be a good thing. But <laughs> uh, at the end of it, I always say, you know what? I'm not going to really judge myself for it. I'm not going to judge myself because the important thing is, is that whether it's on time, whether it's late, whether it's good, whether it sucks, I still did it. I still did it and I put it out there and I continued on my journey. Okay, guys, and I want you guys to know that there are gonna be times where that same stuff is gonna happen. You're gonna do stuff that sucks, you're gonna do stuff that's great, and you got it. The most important thing is that you just keep going. Keep going. So use myself as a perfect example. Today, I'm sure I'll look at this later. I'm sure I'll look at this episode um, probably an hour from now. I'll be like, oh, that actually wasn't too bad. I feel like I was more in my head about it than really what was actually coming out. Or maybe I'll look at it and I was like, well, that was actually really bad. I gotta make sure that I fix this for next time. Um, but the important thing is, is that I really do care about you guys and I love doing this show and I love teaching you guys. So I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> and that's why I'm releasing this one, no matter what, no matter what. So you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, I already said the whole outro. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on YouTube as always. You guys take care. I'll see you next week. Until that time comes, you guys stay awesome.